Hello. In today's video, I'm going to give you an update on the wildflower meadow, which I sowed in this, my wildlife garden, exactly three months ago today. The wildflower meadow is to my immediate right and I've deliberately left it out of shot because I'm going to do a big reveal in a moment, but you're not going to be disappointed. Keep in mind that I only spent £1.49 on the seeds for what you're about to see. Now, I don't want this to be just an update video, so I'm also going to recap the steps I took when I created that wildflower meadow only three months ago. I'm also, in this video, going to give you an overview of the other elements of my wildlife garden, starting off down here with the wildlife pond. And as you can see, I'm already well in to digging it. Now I'm digging this by hand, using this spade and that wheelbarrow. I never intended for it to happen overnight. I'm doing it in small bite-sized chunks. I'm very pleased with the progress I've made so far. And I think within a month, and that's my target, I'm going to be putting water into this hole. There's going to be a large beach area to my left. That's so that wildlife can come in and out. And the other two thirds is going to be ledges for different types of marginal plants. All the pond liner is going to be covered in boulders and large pebbles so that you don't see it. And that way I'll achieve a very naturalistic look. I've left a strip of grass around the outside because it gives stability for my wheelbarrow. When I'm shoveling out the soil, the soil is going behind the camera where I'm creating another mound so that next year the wildflower meadow will be twice as big. Let me climb out of this huge hole and show you the buddlier butterfly bushes which I pruned at the end of spring. There's a complete how-to video for pruning buddleia on my channel, but the results are pretty clear. This one is covered in spectacular white blossom and this one is covered in a beautiful, subtle purple blossom. And unfortunately, you can't smell it, but the air here is filled with an intoxicating, sweet nectar smell. And that is attracting insects from miles around. And insects are a vital part of the ecosystem. In between the two woodly bushes, I'm collecting a pile of twigs. That's great for microorganisms and invertebrates, which are at the bottom end of the food chain. I dare say, if I was to turn that over, there will be thousands of beetles and insects and other organisms that you can't see with the naked eye getting to work. Along the back and all around the corner behind the wildflower meadow, there is a mature hedge of native species. And I can see holly and hawthorn. And that's great for nesting birds to shelter in and nest in during the nesting season. Further along, I have my wildlife log pile. I'm hoping that that's already inhabited by small mammals and invertebrates. And down at the back there, I've created an hibernaculum, which is an underground cavity here for wildlife to crawl into in the winter time. Now we're nearly at the stage where I do the big wildflower meadow reveal. But before I show you that, please bear with me. Let me just recap the steps I took. Originally, this was just a mound of earth covered in weed fabric and gravel. I removed all that and that revealed a large pile of very infertile compacted soil. Actually, the perfect environment for wildflower seeds. I found some paving slabs in the far corner of the garden, so I created some elevated stepping stones along the back of the mound of earth. Elevated so that the wildlife could crawl underneath and find shelter, but also so that I could walk along the back and have a look at the wildflowers from a different angle. Apologies for any background noise. You can hear my neighbour has just bought himself a mini digger and it's just been delivered. And despite the fact that he's offered to lend it to me, no, I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to continue digging that by hand. Getting back to the wildflower meadow. After I'd put the stepping stones in place, I mixed the seeds into a big chug of sand and that helped me to distribute them more evenly. And then I raked them into the surface and gave them a gentle sprinkling of water. I didn't want to water them too hard because I didn't want the seeds to wash away. Anyway, do you want to see how it's turned out? Let's have a look. Here it is. Isn't that 
spectacular. It towers above me. Must be four foot high there. The ugly stepping stones are completely hidden. It's completely exceeded my expectations. I will be writing to Aldi to show them this and to say thank you. When I bought that packet of seeds for £1.49 and sold them onto this bed of bare earth, I had absolutely no expectation whatsoever that it would turn out as good as this. It's a sea of flowers of all kinds of different colours, shapes, sizes and varieties. And from where I'm sitting here, there are thousands of insects buzzing around, working hard to collect the nectar and to pollinate these plants attracted by all those different colours. There was a plant list on the box, which I will put on the screen now. I'll also put it in the description box below this video. But as I go around and I count in front of my eyes, I can distinguish at least 12 different types of flowers. To me, it doesn't even matter what they're called. Imagine if you had to buy these flowers in a bunch every week, it would cost you hundreds of pounds. And here it is, week in, week out, throughout the summer for £1.49 and a little bit of hard work. Not to mention the good this is doing to the wildlife and the environment. And I can see here some spent poppy heads which will be full of seeds. Most of these will per be perennials and they'll continue to seed themselves. So I will get this next year as well. I'm going to buy another packet of seeds from Aldi and I'm going to continue this mound in that direction so that I get twice as many flowers next year. It's absolutely wonderful. I'll be giving you, as I speak, some close-ups to some of the flower heads. I can see poppies, I can see yellow rattle, I can see cornflower. It's absolutely astonishing. And it's not just about the flowers, of course, because I can see honeybees and wasps and butterflies and flying ants and all kinds of different insects. Now I can understand why the people that had this cottage had a low maintenance garden because it was their second home. But this once sterile mound of earth, which was covered in weed fabric and gravel, is now packed with life. And from down here at ground level, as I look up through the flowers, I can see the insects. There are dozens, if not hundreds of them. The air is full of insects and the air is full of the sound of insects. I can hear them humming and buzzing as they go past my ears. Aldi, thank you. And Mother Nature, thank you. I could sit here all day and just look at these flowers. I will give you some footage of these flowers as I'm speaking. I hope you've enjoyed this update video. If you want to buy some wildflower seeds, go no further than Aldi. I commend them to you. And I'm not being paid to say that. Truly wonderful, magnificent, resplendent. I can't really think of any more superlatives to give you, but I'm so pleased and so impressed. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it and also subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already done so, hit the notifications bell so that you find out about my next videos. Join me for more when I continue with the great pond dig and put some water in it and plant it out. Please don't forget to comment below because it's always lovely to hear from you. People this week in New Zealand and the States have commented and it's wonderful to know that the story of my garden is going around the world and I'll see you soon.